Okay, let's find this limit of this function as x approaches 5. So to get started on any of these types of problems where x or whatever your variable is approaching a number, what you want to do is first replace that variable with the number and see what happens from there. All right, so we're going to replace each one of these x's with 5 and then do a little bit of simplifying down to get started. As you can see on our numerator, we're going to end up with negative 45 plus 45, which is going to result in 0 in our numerator. For our denominator, I think we're going to get something similar, where we get 25 minus 10 minus 15, which also results in 0. This tells us that we need to keep going with this problem. All right, but it also gives us some additional information. It tells us as we continue doing this limit, because 5 being plugged in made the numerator equal 0 and the denominator equal 0, it tells us that x minus whatever that x value is, is going to work out to be one of our factors in both the numerator and denominator, assuming we don't have a square root involved or something like that. So as we think about factoring our numerator, we can simply write down that factor, the x minus 5, and kind of work backwards, thinking to ourselves, x multiplied by what is going to make negative 9x? In that case, we're going to get a negative 9. And for our denominator, I think we're going to need a binomial in this case, because we're going to need x multiplied by x to make this x squared. And thinking to ourselves, all right, we need some value that multiplied by negative 5 is going to result in negative 15. I think in this case, we're going to think positive 3. Then we need to double check ourselves just to make sure that as we're multiplying back out, 3 multiplied by negative 5, sure enough, does give us the negative 15. That was this negative 15. But also, as if we were to add those values together, positive 3 plus a negative 5, the result works out to be negative 2, which is our coefficient on that middle term. All right, at this point, we can reduce to lowest terms because we're taking a limit. We have an x minus 5 in the numerator and an x minus 5 in the denominator. So we can simplify, and it does have to do with, because we're taking a limit, we're allowed to simplify. From here, we're left with a negative 9 in our numerator and an x plus 3 in our denominator. To finish this up, what we need to do is we need to, again, evaluate our variable at that value of x. So we end up with negative 9 over 5 plus 3. The 5 gets filled in for the x, which will result in negative 9 over 8, and that's our limit. So I hope this helps out as you're working on taking limits, using a little bit of factoring to find these limits.